Okay, guys, I hope y'all can hear me now. I had to have my wife come in and get this stuff straight. That's why she's been working IT for 22 years. For some reason, the microphone either wasn't turned on properly or we did an update today and we seem to have some problems along with trying to get the uh, speech mechanism working where you can just talk out a letter. <clears throat> if you can hear me, y'all give me a shout out. Uh, we're going to be going over my favorite all-time baits, I guess. If I had a, a dozen or so lures that I was going to keep in my tackle box, these would be the ones that I would use. Uh, I'm going to start off with, I guess, my number one bait I would throw would have to be now would be my my x wrap and as you can see this one has gotten some wear and tear on it and i put single line hooks on it with a little fly in the back uh, for years monica and i caught quite a few with the uh, clear eye mirror lure this this lure here was very very productive i like this one a lot uh, we caught a lot of big trout on that and those small little hooks it doesn't make a difference. I right, uh, Ben, glad to see we got the audio back here. Uh, this soft bait is also made by Mirror Lure. And when w my buddy John Adams and I were fishing one time a couple of years ago down in Keaton, and, and we put these lures on, and they started, you could see they would, we were seeing these trout, the water was so shallow, and they would grab this bait, and they would hold on to it. We switched over to these, and it would seem like they'd spit it quicker if you didn't set the hook immediately. And uh, they were great. They were really a good bait. This is what happens if a blowfish catches that same bait. Shows you what the inside looks like. They'll destroy it. Pretty pretty expensive bait to be destroyed by a blowfish. Uh, I caught one big old trout on it, and it ran out. And I wish I, I wish there had been more people to, to see this on a video, but John was with me. And it looked like it got caught up on something. And I said, oh, man, I'm hung up. So we took the airboat. We were in the airboat during the wintertime. We moved it, moved closer to it with the electric motor. And I thought it was wrapped around a clump of something in the water. It turned out to be a crab trap. It was an old rotten crab trap sitting out there in about two feet of water. And this trout ran inside of the crab trap. As we got closer to it, I said, oh, my gosh, Johnny, I'm not believing this. Look here, this trout is in the crab trap. And we were going to pick the trap up in order to get the trout. And by the time we moved it, it bolted where the, the uh, hook was hooked on the trout, on the trap rather. And, the, and the, the trout was able to break loose and swim out the other side of the rotten trap. Uh, and that's one of those stories that you remember when you say you, it's not the fish you caught today, but the journey along the way. That's one of the stories that I'll never will forget. And I'm sure glad John was with me that day to, to be a witness. Uh, the next bait, I guess, would be uh, the Catch 2000 during the wintertime in dark water. This is the junior year. I throw the larger wind more than I do this junior. That's a good bait. And naturally, I guess we have to say the uh, everybody wants to throw a top water. The Zorro Spook is very good. Uh, I also like this uh, Rapala here and you see I got the fly on the bottom of it and it has that let me go over here with it has a, a keel let's see here if I can show that right it has kind of a V keel bottom and it really does walk the dog well that's that's a very good bait and and it it's it's got a, a different knock to it it's really good um, the other baits that I would do out of this group I've got on my desk and this is just a two dollar three dollar bait from Bass Pro and this little bait, I don't know the name of it. I hope that y'all can kind of look at it. It has a very small lip, and it doesn't allow it to dive, but maybe a foot or two. And you pull it, stop it, and it comes back to the surface. This bait in the spring is dynamite. I love this bait. Uh, and naturally, everybody's, you know, shrimp, it would be the uh, DOA, multiple colors. This particular holograph color has always worked well for me. Uh Another has a, has a bait called a biter bait. These baits are really good, as, and but they the finish of them doesn't hold up very well. That's the only drawback I have on this uh, biter bait. Uh, and then naturally we've got our 
old paddle tails. And this is a, another paddle tail now. They're making them with that larger, wider tail. Gives you a lot of action. <clears throat> and then the old jerk, jerk bait. That's a really good one. It works well. And if we get into the, another shrimp other than the uh, the, the uh, DOA, would have to be the voodoo shrimp, which I'll watch that video of Monica catching that large red. It was on this voodoo. It's a very duck tough and durable bait. I mentioned the other day that I got these uh, at uh, Academy Sports and uh, Sports with Sports Academy. And I think I said they were $10. They're, they're about $10 for two of these baits. So they're pretty reasonable for how durable they are. And I, I bought a bait a few years ago and it wasn't one of these spinner baits. It has a spinner up at the top and a V and down. And it was just a straight inline bait. And this is basically all it was. And I, and these are baits now we're going to start to sell in the spring. This bait, it just throw it out and reel it to the boat. That's all you have to do with this one. That, that's it. And and I just happen to have this paddle tail one now, which I've been using here in Savannah. And it works well. But I like a, a, a pink uh, Z-Man straight jerk shad, this style body. And just just throw it out and just reel it steady to the boat. And it's when a red comes up on it, don't and you see him following it, don't stop. Keep it keep it going at a steady space. And they kind of peck, peck, peck in a minute, and all of a sudden they'll grab it like you hooked into a log. And uh, when they get them, I've got some photos I'm going to get up and post later of about six or eight reds I got into, one almost every single cast. And I was trying to just get my one. I think then it was two red limit at that time. And I was trying to get my couple of reds and go to try to catch trout. And uh, it, it, it's just like I couldn't do it. And once I got my couple of fish limit, because they were all out of the slot, I, uh, I turned around and I went to a different area. I started throwing the same inline spinner bait where you catch very little grass on it. And I started catching trout. And I understand that if you get rid of the gold blade and go to a silver blade, uh, the trout seem to hit it more than they do the gold. So uh, those are some of my favorite lures. I, if y'all got any comments out there on y'all's favorite, you just kind of stick with. I guess it would be the one that you fish the most, but these have always been really productive. If I had to have something I could put in a plastic bag and use 90% of the time, these would be the baits that I would use. Uh, got some comments here. Love you. This is uh, Ben Barry. Yes, audio is good. Uh, assassin, Rune Assassin, I love your channel. You remind me of my grandfather that passed away who taught me everything about fishing. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, ben Barry was the first bait you showed a corky fat boy. Uh, no, it's not the Corky. It's just a regular uh, Paul Brown. The Corky Fat Boy, I, I find that to be a little heavier. I'm going to try to look up some things on, on uh, line and see how these guys in Texas, and I don't know what depth of water they're fishing in Texas, but this is this is a killer bait down there for the big trout. Uh, there's an area in Texas called Baffin Bay, I understand that they do really well with this bait. But I, I can't seem to... To fish it very well in two or three feet of water. I have to fish it in four feet of water or it'll sink too quick for me in the wintertime. I like to fish my baits really slow in the wintertime. Uh, let's see here. Uh, ben Barry, I had this is from the other day. It says, Wow, talk about Monica and that, that red that we posted uh, with her catching that red and it getting all tangled up around the airboat rudders. It says, uh, Great catch. She just and she knew just what she was doing and playing that big red and not losing him. Oh, by the way, Monica wanted me to tell you, uh, Ben, that it wasn't a he, it was a she. <laughs> uh, Kelly Baker, that was an awesome to watch. Great catch. Yeah, she does a great job. She really does. She's a great fisherman. She, I tell you, I'd rather have her in the boat when it comes to catching fish than a lot of men. Uh, Terry Morgan, great catch. Bob Geis, nice fish. Bob, uh, we're interested in your last name. Uh, what's your nationality? 
please let us know. Uh, Monica says that the word Geis in German is, is for the term goat. So I hope I haven't offended you with that comment. Uh, that's about all I have for tonight. I haven't done any nostalgia things in a while. And I'm going to read off a few here to you guys who uh, are older like myself. Uh, our, our demographics that watch us are, are in about the 45-year range, which uh, was I guess don't get a lot of these uh, nostalgia things that we put out, but you older guys will. It says, do you remember when high fives and 45 RPM records, uh, 78 RPM records, uh, and then the H&H &H green stamps, I think I mentioned that once before, and a mimeograph machine, and uh, the old Fort Apache sets with all the little toy uh, soldiers, so to speak. And uh, do you remember a time when decisions were made by any, meeny, miny, mo, and mistakes were corrected by simply explain, exclaiming, excuse me, do over. Oh, here's one. Race issues meant arguing about who ran the fastest. So I'm going to leave it with y'all. Uh, just don't forget to uh, give us a thumbs up and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, hit the bell and subscribe. And go to our website, look at the tools of the trade that we have, and, and also uh, links for the uh, influencer page. And uh, leave questions and comments like uh, we've been seeing here tonight. Oh, just had another one pop up. Uh, German, Irish, and French. Well, Monica, do you hear that? She's in the other room. Never knew the meaning. Always heard it was great. LOL. A reunion session. Last name is... Spanish in baby cow, LOL. Huh. I love to hear this. I love to learn something new every day. Well, guys, I uh, hope you all have a good weekend. Don't forget to uh, take a kid fishing and you can't catch him on the couch. And tight lines to you. Have a good day.